Thanks, Maggie. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining this session. Uh, I will talk about the geotechnical problems caused by the 2023 Karim Amaraj Turkey earthquakes. And this presentation is uh, presented by me and also contributed by Professor Tuce Bashar from University of Illinois and Professor Okan Ilhan from uh, Ankara Yildirim Beyazıl University. So, uh, we were three people doing the reconnaissance six days after the earthquake. Me, uh, Professor Tuce Bashar from University of Illinois, and uh, Sara Dönmez, who is a, uh, uh, who's working in I4 Works Corporation, and he participated in the reconnaissance with us as a drone operator. And he de deployed on February 12th to the area, and he collaborated with multiple individuals. Professor Yosef Hashash was uh, providing us support virtually from United States. Professor Omar Pekcan from Middle East Technical University uh, was supporting us by providing drones and logistical support. And he also is a founder of i4Works and SideEye uh, software that I will show you later on. And Professor Okan Ilhan from uh, Yildirim Beyazıt University. So this presentation includes the details of the reconnaissance coverage we achieved in the area. And uh, I will show you some comparisons between the design codes and the ground motions, as was mentioned before, and briefly talk about the geotechnical performance of dams, liquefaction evidence, and some large-scale induced uh, landslides, which got a kind of a huge media attention in Turkey. So we went there, I'll show you some, some slides from So this was covered already. We have two earthquakes with the focal depth up to nine kilometers and a lot of aftershocks and uh, two fault structuring. So I'm not gonna go into detail on this one. This gives a perspective of the area. So the red area, red cities are the ones that are impacted by the earthquake. And the small one is uh, basically a map of Turkey and Europe. So you can see the size of the uh, impact areas more than most of the European countries. We visited five cities among 11 of them that are impacted. And uh, on the western left is Adana, where I am from. I born and raised there and then moved to States 10 years ago. And I unfortunately went back for uh, disaster and reconnaissance. Uh, so we started from Adana in the westest part because it was close to the earthquake time six days after. So we wanted to be in the, a little bit far away, but close enough to commute to the area. And we covered Adana, Iskenderun, Osmani, Antep, and uh, Kahraman, Maresh, Hatay, Osmani, and Antep. So five of the 11 cities. This is the uh, technology that was mentioned in the previous uh, presentation that we used three different sizes of drones for three different purposes. And these drones were provided by uh, I4 Works company, is owned by Professor Omar Pekcan from Middle East Technical University. And one thing I want to mention is that all the data I'm showing here and more of it is available uh, online. So you can just uh, sign up for the software and then access to the disaster database. So I'm going to briefly flip through some pictures and show you qualitative observations from the area. So this is a, a calculation performed by Professor Okan Ilhan to show the side effects. So you are seeing the design codes 475 years and 2,475 years return periods. And with, with these different VS30 values in different sites, we are having a, a relatively different spectral 5% damp spectral acceleration. So this kind of indicates that there are possibly side effects that happen in the area, so which would probably require further study or a clarification, not clarification, but explanation and, and further study on that one. So in terms of geotechnical engineering, we found many, uh, many, uh, we observed many different things, including dam, defor dam deformation, surface fault ruptures, liquefaction at the coastal areas, as well as uh, some landslides. So I'll briefly flip over these with you so that, you know, disseminate the information we collected. This picture is a bird eye view of a dam, uh, which is Arklakash Dam. So uh, I tried to annotate it as much as possible, but what we are seeing here is a almost three to four meter crest cracks that is happening in an eight meter wide original crack. And then with uh, like continuous cracks along the up upstream slope of the dam, as well as the like the seismic compression on the near to the crest, as well as bulging at the uh, toe of the crest. And most of the deformations were either at the crack or at the upstream slope. The downstream slope was pretty, pretty okay. So this was one of the observations that we collected. Another dam, Kartalkaya Dam in Pazarcı Kahraman Maraş, which is close to the epicenter. We, we measured up to 30 centimeters seismic compression, and then which 
manifested itself with the surface cracks at the crest level. Both dams they formed, but they didn't have any breach type failure or infiltration of the water because the, you can see the, you can't, it doesn't go back. So upstream, like if you look at the water level, they were not very high during the earthquake, so they didn't overfill or did any uh, damage. This is a snapshot of a, a, a landslide that we, we recorded with the drones. So this kind of uh, indicates the usage of the drones. This area was not accessible via walk. This was like in the remote area that the active railroad was going. So we deployed the drone to be able to take different shots from different angles so that we can later on use it to, to model in, in, a, in a 3D uh, space. So we, this railroad was active. As you can see, the operating machines here were trying to clear out the road. So eventually they opened it in two, three days later. But this was one of the landslides we documented. Now, we were, when we were there, there was like significant speculation going in the media about, you know, they, they observed a big fold rupture open in the uh, olive farm and it's, it's crazy. And, and like, there was a lot of media attention on that one. And then we deployed to the area. It was in the border of the uh, Turkey, Turkey and Syria. This is Aleppo here and Hatay Antak region here. So this is the bird's eye view of the, of the, the crack. This is in fact a flow type uh, most likely flow, flow, type slow, flow type slope instability. The area was kind of dipping 10 to 30 degrees sloping ground. And after the earthquake, what happened is two meters deep, 200 meters wide, and 400 meters long canyon-like space opened up between the two edges of the uh, olive farm. So interesting thing we observed, this was my first reconnaissance, so it's particularly interesting for me. So we, I showed you a photo from here. And we were talking to the locals there, just, you know, what happened, you know, how are you feeling, and, and those kind of things. They mentioned that the day before there was a very heavy rainfall that were very unusual for the area. And there was a little kid there that he told us that there's another one in the back, if you want to come and see that. And we went to the, the back area, we saw another back scarp-like formation there. And then we asked, you know, that there are houses here, so there's a scarp here, there's a scarp-like something there. And we're like, can we check your houses to see you know, if there is any deformation in the houses? And then when we went there, what we saw was that there was like 30 to 50 centimeter relative deformations like between the, the soil and the foundation. And there was a the sewer pipeline which is supposed to be straight. And the person put a new one, local person put a new one there to be able to accommodate for displacement. So in fact, the houses in between those two formations were already moving during the earthquake. So, for regarding this landslide, there are a couple questions that, that might kind of uh, facilitate some discussions. Was this slope already mobilized due to the heavy rainfalls that were kind of unexpected at the area at the time? And what's going to happen uh, after the earthquake? You know, aftershocks or creep type movement, or what if there's another large earthquake happens? How much movement are we expecting? Because there are houses there. People are living around the area. So these are questions that probably deserve a little bit more attention. And this is a coastal area, district of Iskenderun, which is a district of the city of Hatay. It is near the, the Mediterranean Sea right here. So what I'm showing you here is a bird's eye view of the Atatürk Boulevard right next to the Mediterranean Sea. And all these shaded areas we are seeing are the where we uh, observe sand boils. So the, the extent of the sand boils we have seen are massive. And I personally never seen that big of a scale of a like, manifestation before. So this is like some like collapsed houses, some tilted buildings, some totally collapsed building, and the, the entire area is like kind of liquefied. We have been informed that this area is a reclamation land, so it was reclaimed over to, like, time over time. So we don't know the exact details, but we know that there's a great amount of material kind of laying in the bottom of it. Another near free field liquefaction manifestation, that kind of textbook sand boil photo. A sand ejector near a uh, mosque we observed, and then with sand ejector came lateral spreading uh, with like 10 to 20 centimeters cracks and the differential settlements around the mosque. We did a quick calculation to indicate that the the level of the grand failure and then most of the buildings that we measured the tilts and lateral deformation and settlements indicated that the grand failures was significant. We used the, the methodology introduced in San Seattle 2002 to, to, to calculate these. So 
and this is an interesting picture. We deployed our drone to take an overall view of the structures. What you are trying, what I'm trying to show here is there are some buildings that are stable, some that are completely collapsed, some of them are tilted, and most of these are the same story buildings that are, you know, laying uh, right next to each other. So the question is why did one of these perform really well? The other totally collapsed, and some of them are still functional, but you know people cannot live in it. So this is a question that I, I pose to myself to, to further figure out what happened there exactly. To conclude, yeah, further investigation is necessary to better understand the liquefaction part, and I, in fact, I know that these studies are ongoing right now. We need to evaluate why some dams performed, you know, a good way, some dams deformed, and one landslide that I show, I think monitoring the slow movement is, is, is a good practice because the locals are living there and we do not know what would happen in another earthquake. Hit the area, side effect seems to be visible and then uh, ground motions show these type of uh, effects and the calculations in, in terms of response spectra and finally at some locations some buildings perform really well, some buildings you know have a total collapse so we probably need to further investigate what kind of foundation conditions were there, what were the material, if there was a ground improvement or not, if there was a ground improvement, to what extent they improved it. So these are the questions that will probably be studied in the near future. Thank you very much. I think I'm not that bad. <laughs>